friends. Welcome back to Flower Patch and today we're doing some fall cleanup, a uh, little prep for winter, etc. So I am going to work on my Eden Rose a little bit and what I'm going to do is tie in some canes that are getting kind of wild and wooly everywhere. This isn't going to be a hard prune or a prune for ready for winter but I did want to take some cuttings. Um, this is let's see, September 25th. It is not the optimum time to be taking cuttings from roses, but I have meant to do this all summer. And I meant to do an air layering video for you on how to propagate your roses by air layering. I do have a blog post on it. You can see the step-by-step -step in the photos. I just have failed to get a video done of it, but you can get the idea how to do it there. I love using that method. It's very successful and you get a bigger rose faster. But cuttings are also very successful. In fact, my one rose cutting video on YouTube is one of my highest visited ones. So I know it's something that a lot of people like to do. So I'm gonna show you actually a new method that is, well, new to me, uh, of propagating roses from cuttings. So first I'm gonna take the cuttings, tie in some of my rose, and we'll get going from there. So stay tuned for propagating rose cuttings in fall. So I'm gonna go up here, take a good look, because some of these I want to tie into the frame of the arbor more. That one's too stiff. And I'm gonna deadhead. So you'll see roses falling by the wayside here because they are done. And this one, like I said, I'm not gonna be able to tie that in. It's just too stiff, but I can cut that back if I need to later. So that these do have new growth on them. Can you see this? It's beautiful new growth. Um, and I doubt I'll have a long enough season for that to bloom, but just in case I do, I'm gonna leave it. And then later on in the season when I need to do a harder prune, I will uh, bring you along for the winter because uh, the snow, it catches on this and uh, creates a problem. So this piece I cut off, this is one I'm gonna make cuttings from. Now, you know, it did have a bloom on it, um, but it was faded and gone. So I'm gonna use this as cutting material for starting some more. It didn't have new growth at the top, so that's why I went ahead and took it. So here's two more. Canes. Now this one's a little thin. You want it to be almost a pencil thickness. And so that one is too thin for my liking. I could try it, but since I have so much material here to cut from, I'm not gonna be too picky. I mean, I am gonna be picky. The opposite of what I meant to say. Okay, so I will continue on. And while I'm up here, I'm gonna cut back the clematis that bloomed along. This is a type to pruning clematis. So I will eventually just cut it down at the ground level, but for now I'm going to leave it. Okay, that's got new growth. This has new growth. This, this one does not have new growth. And it's kind of thick in here, so um, deciding what to tie in may be difficult, so I will just play it by ear and all of that. What a nice breeze today. Let's see this one. Okay, this one. Let's see what that one, that one. That one is kind of thin. We'll see how I like that one later. Okay. I guess I have enough material from here, this side. I can try the other side. Okay, let me see about this piece over here. This does not have new growth on it. And I'll cut it way down here and pull it free. Now, cuttings taken this time of year typically take longer to root. Um, I could put them in under my lights, but I think I'm gonna put these in the greenhouse for the time being. And then later on, if it gets cold fast, I will bring them in. So, see, does this, yes, that has new growth on it. 
and I'm cutting out old dead growth that I'm seeing at the same time. Okay, there are some cuttings. I'm seeing what's looking good over here. On this side, there's new growth on that one. So I'm just gonna tie this in because it is going into the pathway here. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep it when I do my hard, harder fall prune. Now I have to hard prune in fall because uh, of our heavy wet snows. And I do that on all of my roses. They not always are dormant because sometimes we have from nice warm weather and we shoot right into winter weather. So nothing will have had the time to go dormant and I need to cut them back to protect them from breaking. And cutting them before they're dormant, cutting them back is better than having them be snowed on and then broken by the heavy snow. So it's just kind of like the lesser of the two evils. It's not ideal, it's not ideal to prune them back hard before they're dormant. But if that's what your circumstances require, then don't be afraid to do it. They will do just fine, as you can see from all of my beautiful roses in here. So let's find some more canes that, well, that one, this one needs to be tied back in because it's leaning way out there. I just use pantyhose strips, but there's all kinds of tie-in material. I like the pantyhose strips because um, they stretch, so it doesn't cause damage to the canes, but also because um, they turn green. And so they just kind of blend in with everything and look pretty. I'm gonna bring you up a little bit closer and I'll show you some cutting material. I know I had to pull my camera way back so that you can see that I'm seeing so can you see this? This one see, is spent, and the last two buds on it, blooms on it, are um, over, the, over the hill. So I'm just gonna come in, and I'm going to come back here to where it's about a pencil thickness. I could go back further, and it, the material is even harder, but this is fine. Now, one thing nice about the Eden Rose is there's not very many thorns, if any. Is there any thorns in there? I don't know, but it's, it's so nice to have near a pathway or whatever, you don't have to worry about the thorns. So, I'm cutting off the leaf sets, and I'll leave that on there. And let's go ahead and take our material that we've cut to, I would say in the greenhouse, but that's a disaster right now, to the back deck. And I will share with you how I'm going to try, and I say try because I may fail, to start these cuttings. And, um, and I will let you know later on if they do or do not root for me. Now this method, I would typically or try to do like more like uh, June, July-ish rather than September, but I have started cuttings in the fall. So using other methods. Now this method just seemed like it was really a good idea and I'll share with you why. So before we do that, I'm going to cut, cut, I'm going to tie in, whoops, some of these others that are just either cut off or tie in. This one's done here. I'm gonna cut it back to this big thick cane. Now with Climbers, there's a lot of times you aim for one main cane. Well, I have a couple of main canes. So um, it's really lush and thick. And I didn't think I was gonna get that kind of growth this year because I had to come in and really prune it hard late in the season um, because of a lot of broken canes. That one's a nice one. And it's, that one's kind of a harder instead of green. I'm gonna try to root that one. It's a little harder material. So oh, I've got several pieces. Now when it's a little bit harder, they do take a little bit longer to root and they're harder to root, but they're less likely to die from a fungus or some kind of a tack like that. You know this one? Okay, that one is tied to that one. So this one I will tie in a little bit because it's hanging way down there. And this is that clematis that climbed, it was so pretty, the clematis climbing up here with the rose, it was just 
did better than I had really anticipated. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? So this one is coming out. So there's another main cane shooting up that direction. I really should just take that one out and just focus on these that are going this direction. So I will make that decision when I come in to do a super hard prune and see where everything's emanating from. Okay, I was gonna try to get this tied up. It wasn't tight, and I got to yapping and doing something else. So let's tie it in there and call it good. And then we will go and start some cuttings. Now, one thing I like to get lots of cutting material, and I didn't probably get enough yet, because the more cuttings you try to root, the better success you have, meaning at least you have a chance of getting something. Um, that's got new growth, new growth. Okay, just checking out some more. I think this one can go because it just finished budding or flowering ah. and it has, it's fading. One thing I love about the Eden is it holds its color, um, not color, but holds its flowers for a long time. And even though they fade, they're still beautiful. Fade in color. Okay, yeah, this one's pretty sturdy too. Semi-hardwood. So, okay, let's go. As I said before. <laughs> okay, so let's get going on our cuttings to root. So, first of all, there is two terracotta pots. I have this one has a piece of terracotta shard covering the hole in the bottom. This one is an azalea pot, so it's shorter. I think that's what they call it. Let me double check that on the bottom. If it is, yep, azalea pot. Okay, so that goes there. Then there's a secondary smaller terracotta pot. This one is kind of chipped and gnarly, so I picked it. And I got a little cork, a rubber cork off of Amazon. I had all, got a whole package of them because I didn't know what size I needed. So got that. And that's gonna sit in here on this. Now, I don't think I have enough horticultural sand to fill in here. So I'm gonna use some potting soil and then sand. And that will work. I, a lot of times, many times, I just root in potting soil. But I had a friend who did a lot of propagating. And she preferred horticultural sand because it, it drains well, but will also hold moisture. So it didn't drown them if you got too um, excited with watering. So I'm just gonna put this in here. And you can pretend this is all sand or you can just use the potting soil. So this method is supposed to prevent the overwatering issue. Also the sand is supposed to um, be a bit safer because there's less chance that it's harboring any kind of pathogens or what have you. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but that's the theory. So, okay, so I've got it halfway filled. I think I have enough in there to uh, go ahead and add the sand and have it be enough. Let's hope, 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 hope. Yeah. Now you can use just any sharp sand. I've used paver sand and other types of sand, but I like the horticulture sand is pretty. <laughs> Sometimes you just go for pretty. Plus in these small bags, it's just really easy to pick up. At least uh, this one was. Okay, so a little bit got into the inner pot, but that's not a big deal. So there we have the two pots layered together like this. So then we're gonna do our cuttings. now. I, for roses, I prefer the Hormex number eight because it is for harder wood cuttings. Now this is old. I would prefer a newer one. They do have a lifespan, so it's probably not very um, as potent as I would like it to be. And here is another type. Um, this one is the type one. So this one should be eight times stronger, but being old, I don't know that it is. So yeah, it looks kind of pink. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna... Um, which one was purple, this one? I put it in here to use instead of dipping directly into it. Many people will dip directly into this, but you can contaminate it if you use it that way. So here's one of the cuttings. Well, now this one, I can get a couple of cuttings off of it. I'm gonna remove the leaves again. 
or off of this one. I did remove leaves on some of the others. Put that down there. And then I'm going to recut this. Now, let me see if you can see this. You see this? Uh, that's a leaf node where leaf growth would come from and or cane, I'm not sure which, but I like to have those be part of it. I cut at an angle that's supposed to draw up water better or moisture, what have you. Um, and then I will dip it in here. Now, usually I have a paintbrush to help me to put it on here and I probably shouldn't put my finger in it, but some people also say to wound like this part, wound it and that will help the rooting. Now, let me see, I'll use another cane to make a hole, but in sand, holes don't stay. So when you push it down in here, people say, oh, you're rubbing off all the rooting hormone. There's gonna be enough in there to uh, do the job. Plus, you don't have to have rooting hormone for them to root. It is just something that's supposed to hasten it. So I'm gonna cut this right at this juncture and I'm gonna put it down in there. Sink it down as low as it works over top of all those little nodes. And then we're gonna go with this one. This one came off, that was off that vine too. It's already at an angle. I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna wound this one. And it's, that is just a theory. You don't have to wound, but I will this one. I want it on that tip. And we'll just go ahead and sink it in here. Now you can remove all the leaves. Leaves can harbor pathogens, uh, fungus, bacteria, what have you. And I'm gonna go all the way around the pot with all of these cuttings doing the same thing. So some of them I may not wound. This one is, I had cut it a while back, so I'm just making sure that it's a fresh cut. If that's necessary, who knows, I'm just doing it. There's no one way to do things. People, different people have different methods and um, surprisingly, a lot of people get results. So don't, bot, don't worry about um, if you're trying a new method. This one, this method is totally new to me. Um, I've done it in cups, I've done it in, um, containers, planting containers. I've done I've done all kinds of cuttings. I, the only one that didn't work for me was doing it in potatoes. You know, you've seen them stuck in potatoes. That did not work for me. So this one. And I think wounding does help some more of the stuff to stick to it. But that's just my opinion of actually messing with these things. I could put these a little closer together and I may, because I've got a lot of material here. As I said, as I was cutting these, um, the more material you have, the better chance you have of success. That's just a, a numbers, you know, basically numbers. You can expect 50% success. Um, I usually have about 80%, but, so this one, this is a juncture actually where this, was one limb and this put out another limb and there was one coming out that side. These are supposed to root faster and better. Whoops, I knocked over my stuff. Have, have I been in the camera for that? Here's my rooting hormone. Oh, poured it out on the table. I can rub right in it. I'm sorry if I was off camera for that. Now this one, this piece has, has thorns, whereas a lot of the others did not. So that's interesting. Just be mindful of that. And sometimes people think or feel that just removing a thorn is wounding it enough, and then I rub the hormone on the wound. Okay, here, so this one's gonna be a little bit closer than I have been to the others. And that one was a little bit longer, that's trash. So here's another one where, see how it's a branch, and then there's another branch coming out? I would like this to be under the soil. So I will just cut back that part, and then I'll cut it up here. So I know this part's gonna go under the soil and I'm gonna remove the leaves. 
I'll cut it a little bit shorter. It doesn't have to be that tall. And then I will rub the hor rooting hormone all over it. Now, there are liquid rooting hormones, and I used to get one that was a, a concentrate, and you, you made your own dilution, meaning you could do, you know, one to four or make it stronger as needed, but it came in such a big container, and I know it has a, a shelf life, so I didn't need that much, um, and I didn't use it that much. I think that would be great for people who do cuttings as for a living or as a small nursery. Now, this one's kind of on the small side. And if I wanted to, so I could fill it up, I could go get some more cuttings, but I'm going to try this one. You never know. Here, let me cut this at an angle. And I'll put that one right in there. So we have all of them in here, all of the cuttings. And then you fill this center part with water. Fill it up, and it will leach, I guess that's the best word I can think of, the moisture into this area here. Now, um, I probably will need to water this in, this part here. I hadn't really researched that part a lot, but I would assume you want to start with moisture in there rather than waiting for it to leach through. And as it's needed, it will draw the water into this area so it's never too wet, which I think that's genius. And supposedly you're, you don't have to put a cover on it because the moisture right here produces enough humidity that you don't need to cover it. So I'm gonna give it a try. I should try a second one. Um, and put a humidity dome over it or something to, to keep the humidity in and see, compare. I think that would be a great experiment. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this in. I just need to get a catch tray for underneath. Let me get a catch tray. And I'll dump out that hormone if I don't use it up. I won't put it back in the container. So here's a catch tray. Yes, it's a little grubby because it had a plant in it. So, and then I'm gonna go ahead and water in around. Now, some people have said that um, you know you're rinse, you're washing off the rooting hormone um, when you do this, and I I haven't had any issues with that, so I don't know. Maybe that's something that's true, but I've rooted bazillion roses. In fact, I will share. Well, the one rose I did, the Eden rose on the other side of the arbor. I had the one on the right, and then one on the left. That one on the left, I rooted. No, I didn't root um, it, I did the air layering. Yeah, I did the air layering, but I've also done this rooting in cups and what have you, and I've never um, had any issue as far as watering things in. So I'm going to, it's water, it's coming through, and one thing I love about terracotta as well is you can see when it's moist. So you know when there's moisture in there, plus, when it comes to watering, you just keep this one filled, it will do the watering. So it takes the guesswork out of it, which I really like, because sometimes you just, you don't know when there's, you're giving it too much water or if you're not having enough. And that's why I like the, the clear McDonald's cups when I do it, because you can kind of see, but it still is a guesswork. And, and I get the question often, how often do I water the cuttings when I do my other methods, when I've shared my other methods? And you know, that is totally relative to your climate, your humidity levels, how hot it is. All of those variables are involved, so I can't give you one set answer. That's why I don't say, oh, water every two weeks or give it this amount of water because it is so different in different areas. So you have to figure out how often to water, oh, there's gonna be a motorcycle go by. Oh, that's my neighbor's um, generator. Uh, you have to determine what is keeping it moist enough without overdoing it. But with this method, you don't have to worry about that. You just keep this inner terracotta pot filled and you're good to go. Now, I don't know, I need to look up whether or not you need to put a lid on this, like a terracotta lid. Well, what are you looking for, Rachel? Hmm? Just stay out of stuff over here. I don't want you licking any of this. Miss Curious. So there you have it. A new method to me 
of propagating rose cuttings. And I'm sure this would work for many types of cuttings, not just roses. In fact, I wanted to take some of some salvia. I should see if this would work for it. Now, I could put this in on my plant rack in my house under lights, but we're still getting, I think, plenty of sun, light, daylight, for at least another month that I can go ahead and put this out in my greenhouse and have it in there and then go ahead and bring it in when it gets really cool because it w could get down into the 30s by the beginning of next month. So we'll play it by ear. So I'll be sure and return when I have an update for you on these. And many times, many times, they will put out new leaf growth, the, the cuttings will, but there won't be roots yet. So don't be fooled by thinking when you have leaves that you have roots. Um, they usually have enough stored energy to put out new foliage without having roots yet. So I've had a lot of people say, oh yeah, I've had success. And then later they said, no, there was foliage, but no roots. I, I wanted to tell you that ahead of time. So I hope you enjoyed this little experiment video on how I am trying a new method for rooting roses. I particularly want another Eden rose to add to my rose garden. And we'll see how this flies. And I will let you know for sure how the cuttings do, even under less than optimum conditions being so late in the season. So I hope to see you in the next video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. Okay, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.